everyone. We're still discussing the accounting cycle and we're moving forward to the next step in the accounting cycle talking about analyzing transactions. So first off, let's define a transaction. A transaction is an economic event that involves a change in an asset, a liability, or stockholder's equity account that companies record in their accounting records. So anything that would affect our books, that's a transaction. The accounting equation illustrates the relationship among your assets, your liabilities, and stockholders' equity. So we all remember this, the assets always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So that accounting equation demonstrates that creditors and owners have claims on the company's assets. And this, of course, can be expanded, which we'll see here in just a second, but it can be expanded for the stockholders' equity section to include contributed capital, which will be your common stock and preferred stock, as well as retained earnings and accumulated other comprehensive income. That'll be discussed much later um, as we move along. Remember that revenues and gains increase retained earnings, whereas expenses and losses and distributions to owners in the form of dividends, they actually decrease retained earnings. And remember that retained earnings is the ending retained earnings is found by taking your beginning retained earnings adding your net income, which again would be made up of your revenues, your gains, subtracting your expenses and losses, and then subtracting out your dividends that are declared will, in, will give you your ending retained earnings. So let's look at some uh, balances in our, our uh, accounts. So we have our assets, again, equals liabilities plus owner's equity, and then we have our income statements, our revenues and expenses, and we just want to see how these accounts are affected with debits and credits. So remember that assets increase with debits and decrease with credits. Liabilities decrease with debits and increase with credits. Your equity accounts, or equity, decreases with debits and increases with credits. Therefore, since revenues and expenses affect equity, Revenues will decrease with debits and increase with credit. So as revenues go up, equity goes up. And expenses will increase with debits and decrease with credit. So as expenses increase, equity will decrease. Now in this discussion of analyzing our accounts, we have to also recall what is a normal balance in an account. So if someone were to say, what's your normal balance of cash? you would hope that it would be a debit balance and then you would of course tell them the number. So assets carry a normal debit balance as well as expenses. Expenses also carry a normal debit balance. Accounts that would carry a normal credit balance would be your liabilities, your stockholders equity accounts, and your revenue accounts. So let's take a look at the expanded accounting equation where we see stockholders equity actually broken into the points or parts that make up the stockholders equity. And again, that's common stock, could be preferred stock there as well, if you have that, retained earnings, dividends, revenues, and expenses. Always keep in mind that the accounting equation has to be in balance after every transaction. So every debit must equal every credit. So for every debit, there has to be a credit. So we're gonna go through some illustrations, some examples, and what I'd like for you to do is press pause after each one of these um, examples come on the screen and see if you can figure out what accounts are affected, what categories of accounts are affected, and is it going up or is it going down? And then you can come back and we'll, we'll talk about it together. All right, so the first one. Owners invest $40,000 in exchange for common stock. So if the owner's investing $40,000, remember we're talking about the company. So the company is actually receiving $40,000 in cash, which, which is an asset, and they're issuing stock. So the value of owner's equity is actually increasing. The owner's claims on the assets are increasing. So the effect would be assets would be going up $40,000 and your equity would be going up $40,000. The second one, disperse $600 cash for secretarial wages. So the company is paying out $600 in cash 
and our wages expense is also going up here. So cash is going down, so assets are increasing. Expenses are increasing, meaning the stockholder's equity would be decreasing. Okay, so our accounting equation is still in balance. The third example, let's say we purchase office equipment that's priced at $5,200, giving a 10% promissory note in exchange. So in this case, that 10% really isn't relevant at this point because we haven't really accrued any interest yet. Um, however, at this point we are receiving office equipment. So our assets are increasing and we're issuing a note saying that we owe you this money, which is a liability. So assets are increasing by the amount of the office equipment, $5,200, and our liabilities are also increasing by $5,200. Example four, receive $4,000 cash for performing services. So we know that we're receiving $4,000 in cash and we are generating revenue because we're performing a service. Revenues increase stockholders' equity. So as revenues are increasing, stockholders' equity is also increasing. So assets will be going up, stockholders' equity would be going up. So therefore, our accounting equation is still in balance. The fifth example, let's say we pay off a short-term liability of $7,000. We're paying off this short-term liability. Therefore, our cash is decreasing, which is an asset. We're paying off our debt, or some of our debt. Therefore, our liabilities are also decreasing. Let's say we declare a cash dividend of $5,000. Well, we're declaring it, so that means we have officially created a liability for ourselves. It doesn't mean that we are paying it yet. We have only declared it. Therefore, our liabilities have increased by $5,000. Also, when we pay out stockholders, that's decreasing our, their equity or their ownership in, toward our assets. So therefore, liabilities would be increasing equity would be decreasing, continuing to keep that accounting equation in balance there. Number seven, convert a long-term liability of $80,000 into common stock. So what we're doing here is we're saying that someone we've owed money, instead of us paying them back in cash, we're just going to give them part ownership in our business now. So what's happening is our debt is going down and ownership in the company is increasing. So therefore, liabilities decrease by 80,000, stockholders' equity is increasing by 80,000, again, keeping our accounting equation in balance. Let's say we pay cash of $16,000 for a delivery van. So how would that affect the accounting equation? Well, we're paying out cash, so cash is going down, by $16,000 and we're getting a delivery van, which is also an asset. So in this case, there's no effect on the accounting equation because assets are going down and up by the same amount. Different assets, of course, but assets are the only thing being affected here. So note that during each transaction, the accounting equation was always in balance.